Hello, and in this episode of Chapman Game Dev How To, I'm going to be showing you something a little specific, um, how to create an infinite hallway. Hmm. So, to show you what I mean, um, I have, here's what we're going to be making today. Let's play it and take a look. So, we have a rather interesting looking hallway. Let's keep walking. Hmm. So, as we keep walking and walking and walking and walking and I can jump and we will keep walking forever and ever and ever and that little black distance thing is never going to get any closer we will keep walking forever and ever and there's nothing really going on that shows what's going on hmm so how do we do this well this is done using three trigger volume tri um sorry two main triggers a point in the middle between them and a spawn point and some very cool kismet so let's first set up the environment so right now i have a basic box room now uh to make this illusion work really well your long corridor needs to be sufficiently long and the distance between your infinite loop points needs to be sufficiently short where the player won't really notice that they're not getting any closer um that means that little black dot down at the far distance needs to not change that much in size compared to when you're walking so to do this i kind of cheated a little bit and we have a rather long hallway which might as well be infinite depending on your speed but it's about 66,000. So we'll never actually reach the end of these. Um, but it's 66,000 just so we can have an effective distance so we will, won't actually see it. It can probably be a lot shorter than that. But, and you could probably do some other tricks to make it even less noticeable. Um, but this is a little quick one. So now that that's in place, um, I gave it a floor, some basic walls, made both ends black. Something so you can focus on it. If you look from the outside, this is literally just a really long corridor. Here's the only part we really worry about right now. We have our spawn point, which is outside of our infinite loop. Once you walk forward, you now get caught inside this infinite loop space. These three nodes represent the continuous area that you will be walking through. You cannot exceed either of these two points once you enter them. So... What you need to do is first create one uh, trigger for the beginning of your loop, one trigger for the end of your loop, and one anything to sit in the middle. I used another trigger. You can use a path node. You can use a note. You can use anything. doesn't really matter the way we're setting up. It doesn't even need to sit on the floor. It just needs to occupy the middle of between your two loop points or as close together as you can so once you have those set up the rest of this is in kismet so let's open up kismet so this is probably the most more advanced ones of all of our tutorials so far um so here's our two triggers our beginnings and ends um let's take a look at which one's which although it really doesn't matter um who are you trigger five you are this end point and that means trigger eight is our beginning point doesn't really matter which one's which because they both feed their touched events into this in so i strongly recommend going through our uh teleportation tutorial before doing this one because if you've done that you will immediately notice what this is this is an extended version of our basic teleporter that we of our uh, advanced teleporter sorry using get location and rotation and then set actor location so what is going on here well the moment either of these is touched we get the location of that center trigger let's go let's make sure this is the right hymn so selecting that guy select this in the in the level select trigger seven in level it's that middle one. So we get the location of the middle object. Remember, this is a, ver this is a vector, so we're getting an XYZ 
of its location. Then what we want to get is this lo other location, which is the location of this thing. What is this thing? It is whoever touched it, touched either of these nodes. So in our instance, this is the player. So we're getting the player's X, Y, and Z location. Hmm, what are we going to do with that? So we get the player's X, Y, Z. Now, what we need to do is construct a brand new vector to fit into that location. Specifically, we want the X and Z of the player's location. And we want the Y of the trigger's location. Why those? Well, if we look top down of our little level right here, it's like this, you will notice that the, um, actually not that one, let's do the, this one, here we go. So you will notice in this lower right hand corner, this is our world space coordinate system. The hallway extends perfectly down the Y axis. And the X and Z are horizontal and vertical. So we got Y heading all the way down and X and Z heading uh, our vertical and horizontal distance across this hallway. So back in Kismet, reason why we only care about the Y value of our teleportation center point is that we just want to bring the player back to the middle. We don't actually care where he is on left or right of the hallway or up and down. He could be jumping. He could be doing other actions. To showcase what I mean by this, let's actually disconnect the whole player section as well as this input vector into here and just shortcut it. Let's just set the location to that player right there. Let's just set set the location, not to the player, set the location to that center point. And let's see what happens. So we're walking along and it looks okay, but let's move to like left. Oh, left or right. Oh, every time we do that, it will automatically bring us to the center. And it becomes very noticeable where these loop points are because it will always put us back exactly at that center point, regardless of where we are. So... To prevent that, all we need to do is construct this new vertex out of the X and Y, X and Z of the player's location and the Y of the center point. And that will give us, that will make the player, no matter where they are, along, um, X and Z in this hallway, they will always appear they will always move back to here, offset where they normally would be. So trying that one again with it hooked up correctly. Now, as I'm walking and jumping, you can't actually tell where those loop points are. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you're very eagle-eyed, there may be a very slight flicker because the walls you'll see change slightly. So if I'm just walking along in this way, you may see like a little flicker here and there as it does the teleportation. That'll be up to you to build an environment where you don't notice the looping, where you're walking along and suddenly that teleportation won't really matter. That's one of the reasons why the black little thing off in the distance is so, sh is so small. If you remember the uh, uh, Mario 64 game where you're endlessly going up the staircase same thing is going on except they force the camera down like this so you can't actually see the end point so if that's the case if you're forcing the character's camera down you can do this just fine and nothing will be amiss you'll just endlessly be going down this red road and no one will ever notice but if, because I have the little black goal at the end, you need it sufficiently far away for the transition not to be affected. Hope you learned something. Have any questions, post them in the comments. Thank you very much.